In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the patch bay and its relationship to the mixer. We'll start with the patch bay. Along the top, you have the sources of audio. Down the right hand side, you have the audio destinations. The destinations for the USB devices are the outputs from the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. They're inputs, of course, to the external gear that you have connected to the iConnect Audio 4 Plus. The sources for the USB devices are inputs to the iConnect Audio 4 Plus and, of course, are outputs from your externally connected devices. So we are sending, for example, from USB device 1, 1 and 2 into USB device 2, 5 and 6. For the analog audio, you have four channels of input as sources. They are being routed to devices on USB 1 and USB 2. Combinations of the sources are also sent to the analog mixer. The analog mixer allows you to set up various mixes and mix levels for the various inputs and route them to the various outputs. There are six channels of output, lineouts 1 and 2, lineouts 3 and 4, and stereo headphones. You can leave them linked or unlink them. If you unlink them, you'll see all six channels of output. They correspond with the six channels of analog output as destinations. There are eight input channels to the analog mixer shown in the patch bay, again reflected in the mixer itself. These are shown as stereo pairs by default, but again you can unlink them and see each of the eight channels individually. If your resulting display is too large to fit on your screen, you can scroll it as necessary. The inputs to the mixer correspond to the connections you see in the patch bay. U11 and U12, U21 and U22, U13 and U14, and U23 and U24. In the patch bay, likewise. U11 and U12, U21 and U22, and so on. Usually we consider them in stereo pairs, as most of our USB derived signals are stereo, but in fact they are eight individual channels. The outputs of the analog mixer are then sent to various destinations, normally taken in pairs. Channels 1 and 2 normally go to the analog lineouts 1 and 2. Channels 3 and 4 normally go to the analog lineouts 3 and 4. Channels 5 and 6 normally go to the stereo headphone jack. In the mixer pane, the destination from the analog mixer outputs 1 and 2 is set in the destination dropdown normally to be lineouts 1 and 2. Again, this reflects what you see in the patch bay. Likewise, if we look at analog outputs 3 and 4, they are normally sent to analog lineouts 3 and 4. And ditto for the analog headphone mix. It is normally sent to the headphone outs. But you can change any of these to go to any combination as you desire. For example, you can also send the headphone mix to lineouts 3 and 4. When you make changes in the mixer, they are reflected in the patch bay. Notice that when I send 5 and 6 to both analog 3 and 4 as well as the headphones, it disconnects the mix out from the analog mixer 3 and 4. However, as we just set in the mixer, I can send the output to multiple destinations. So, for example, 
To do an A-B test between two pairs of speakers, let's first disconnect the analog 3 and 4 we previously connected, and send the mix from analog mix 1 and 2 to also go to lineouts 3 and 4 as well as it normally does to 1 and 2. Now in the patch bay, you'll see the changes we just made reflected. We can also change the routing in the patch bay. When I click on the destination in the patch bay, that's reflected in the mixer. 1 and 2 are no longer multiple, but only 1 and 2. And analog mixer outs 3 and 4 are only going to destinations 3 and 4. In addition to setting the routing, you can set mix levels independently in the mixer for each pair of outputs. To remove a route completely in the patch bay, click on it and it will turn red and then disappear. You can repeat this with any of the other items. For example, to send USB 2, 5 and 6 to USB 1, 3 and 4. Or, to remove the outputs from USB 1 and 2 that are currently routed to USB 1, 5 and 6. So the patch bay gives you an overview and top level way of changing what's happening in the mixer. In the mixer panel you can take this further obviously and set individual levels for any of the inputs going into the analog mixer for any of the stereo output pairs. You can also collapse down the mixer sections to focus on a single area by single clicking at the top. Click on them again to expand them up again. You can do the same with the destinations to likewise focus on a particular portion. And again single click to expand them out. Well that's a top level overview of the interrelationship between the patch bay and the mixer panes. Be sure to watch the other tutorials in this series for more information about using iConfig. Thank you.